Hello everyone. In this video we'll start learning about wave motion. The standard definition of wave motion is it is the propagation of energy without bulk motion of matter. So energy being transferred from point A to point B while there is nothing changing in terms of the particle's positions. It might deviate from its position a little bit but there is no bulk motion of the particles from point A to point B. It is the only that is being transferred. So if energy is going from point A to point B then this direction is called the direction of wave velocity. The direction of wave velocity is the direction of the propagation of energy. Now, waves are characterized in many different ways. One particular way which we characterize them is in terms of mechanical and non-mechanical waves. So mechanical waves are those which require a medium. So sound is a type of waves because when you speak the air molecules next to your mouth start vibrating and they transfer their vibrations to the molecules next to them and in this way sound travels from point A to point B. If there was no air just vacuum then sound could not propagate. So sound is an example of mechanical waves. Then the second type is obviously non-mechanical. These don't require a medium. right? So an example of this would be light waves. Light travels from the sun to us without any medium being in between, there is only empty space but still light is able to be transported from point A to point B. This proves to us that light does not require a medium to travel. Another way to characterize waves, the more important way is as transverse and longitudinal. So what are transverse waves? They are defined as the waves in which the displacement of particles Again, this is not bulk motion of particles, this is slight displacement from the mean position. So the displacement of particles is perpendicular to the wave velocity. And the second type is longitudinal waves in which displacement of particles is parallel to the wave velocity. So if energy is being transported from point A to point B, then this is the direction of wave velocity. So if the displacement of the particles is in this direction, this general direction then they would be longitudinal waves. If they are in the direction perpendicular to this that is in this direction or inside and outside the plane then they would be transverse waves. Let's see examples of both of them. If you keep a rope stretched between two points and then you move this point up and down then a small crest will form in this rope and it will start traveling towards the right. I'm sure you all have experienced this. So when you do that every particle is moving upwards and then downwards. You did that to the first one, that particular displacement caused a displacement in the second particle and so on and all the particles continue in this motion, once going up and then coming down and then being back at rest. And the wave velocity is towards the right. So in this case the displacement of particles is always perpendicular to the velocity. So this is an example of transverse waves. As opposed to that if you could have longitudinal waves, an example of that would be the traveling of sound. So let's say you're saying something and there are lots of air molecules in between you and the listener. So when you make a sound these air molecules start vibrating and every sound corresponds to a specific way they start vibrating and this vibration causes vibration in the next molecules which causes vibration in the next one and eventually after some time the vibration reaches the eardrum of the person who's listening. So in this case, in the case of sound waves, the displacement of these air particles is in the direction of wave motion. So sound waves are an example of longitudinal waves and an example of transverse waves are waves on a rope. Now let's move on to the mathematical aspects of transverse waves which is what we'll be studying mainly in this video. Okay, so let's take the standard example for transverse waves. We have a extended stretched rope between two points A and B and uh, we move one end of the rope in a particular way so we move it up and then we bring it down such that this pattern is formed at the beginning of the rope. Now make the axis this is my x axis this is my x is equal to 0 origin right and the wave velocity is v towards the right we'll assume that we know what the wave velocity is. So a realistic way we could do this is if we move this particular end x is equal to 0 as y is equal to f of t where t is time it could possibly be t times 2 minus t 
I'm just making this off the top of my head. But this function is 0 when t is 0. It is 0 when t is 2. So that means I start moving it up and I bring it down and it comes back to the origin at t is equal to 2 seconds. So then this is the particular pattern for me. What we want to write is an equation of y is equal to f of x comma t which tells us the displacement of any point x at any time t. Right now we know y of f of t or we could say we know y of f of 0 comma t where x is 0. We know x is 0, the position of x is 0 as a function of time. And we know the wave travels at a speed v. From these two uh, pieces of knowledge, we would like to figure out what is the y of any x at any time t. So it's actually quite easy. Let's assume we're looking for a particular x that is x0. And this point is x0. So this distance is x0. That means the time taken to go from a to x0 will be x0 by v. So whatever the y displacement of x0 is at t, that same y displacement will be of a at a time this before uh, t. Right. Let me try to explain this in terms of numbers so it will be easy. If we know that uh, say the wave travels at 5 meters per second and we want to find out the position of x0 is equal to 10 meters at time t is equal to 20 seconds let's say. So what I know is the position of x0 that is 10 meters at a particular time will be the same as the position of a two seconds before that because it, it took two seconds to go from a to x0. So the position of x0 at t is equal to 20, we're talking about y position, remember. The position of x0 at t is equal to 20 will be the same as the position of a at t is equal to 20 minus delta t, that is x0 by v. Right, so we're starting from this. If we want the position of a particular point at a particular time, we can just subtract this particular vt distance from it and say the position of this at a time delta t before that. So f of x0 comma t will simply be f of 0 comma if x0 has y value at time t that value will be of x0 at time t minus x0 by v because it took a time x0 by v to go from a to x0 right we know what uh, f of 0 comma t is t, t times 2 minus t so this will just be t minus x0 by v times 2 minus t minus x0 by v. Right. Now, this is not the type of function you'll usually be getting. You'll usually be getting sinusoidal functions because we'll be moving it in a sinusoidal fashion. So, let's start looking at that. This concept needs to be clear. So, I have this clear to you that if you want the y position of a particular x0 at a particular time t, that will be the same as the y position of this particular value a certain time before that. Uh, this particular value an even greater time before that so we're just moving back in time by the way if it's moving in the left direction that is the negative x direction then this will become plus right because then it will be a certain time after that right so whenever it's going in the positive direction f of t minus x by v and whenever it's going in the negative direction f of t plus x by v right now this function y is equal to f of t minus x by v is written in many different ways and with that many different quantities are introduced some of which we've already seen in simple harmonic motion so I'm going to write all the ways this can also be written as g of x minus vt g and f are different functions for example if f of t minus x by v is simply 5 times t minus x by v that can be written as minus 5v times x minus vt so it is g of x minus vt, just there's a different constant added. Right, so f and g would be different functions, but writing it in this particular way is completely valid. Similarly, there are two more ways in which this is often written. This will also be written as h of omega t minus kx or i of t by capital T minus x by lambda. So let me tell you what all these terms are. Uh, right now we saw that if we moved uh, one end of the rope up and down a pattern would be created and we saw that to derive this equation f of t minus x by v 
but that I just did for simplicity. From now on, we'll be looking at periodic motion. That means I repeat the motion of one end in a particular interval of time. So, if this is my rope B and this is A, I'll move A up and then down, and then maybe down again and then up, or just up and down again, and it'll create some pattern like this. It might create many different patterns. The point is, it has to be periodic. So, if this is the pattern that is created, then T is the time period of the repetition of the pattern. So, if, if it's repeating in 2 seconds, then T will be, the time period will be 2 seconds. Lambda is the wavelength of the wave. And that is from one point to the other point. That is basically the displacement after a time period t. So from this we can easily derive that lambda will be equal to v times capital T where v is the speed. If I'm moving this particular end up and down and it is at one extreme position at time 2 seconds and it's at the same extreme position at time 4 seconds then the time period is 2 seconds and it will have traveled a distance of 2 times the velocity. And after 2 times the velocity distance this motion will keep on repeating. So after every, you could chop it into any interval of lambda and that interval is repeating throughout. This is similar to periodic motion in terms of simple harmonic as you've already seen. Omega is defined as 2 pi by t and it is the angular frequency, I'm not going to write it. Mu is 1 by t and it is the actual frequency. Mu has the units hertz, omega has the unit uh, radians per second and k is a new quantity that is called the wave number and it is equal to 2 pi by lambda. And if k is 2 pi by lambda and omega is 2 pi by t, then you can see that omega and k are also related by a factor of v. So in all of these, just the constants are different, but the coefficient of x and the coefficient of t always have the ratio of v. Here is the ratio of v, v, omega and k have the ratio of v, t and lambda have the ratio of v. So these are just different ways in which you may write an equation and most often we'll be using x minus vt. However, if you take uh, physics in college, you'll start using h times omega t minus kx because it is more convenient to deal with that. An example which we may be looking at again and again is if I've kept a row between two points and I move this point A up and down in a fashion y is equal to sine of omega t. Omega is the angular frequency and I've just moved one end in simple harmonic motion. Then if the wave speed is V, then every other end would move in simple harmonic motion and the state of this end at a particular time will be the state of this particular end a certain time before that. So this will be Y of 0, Y of X comma T in this case will be sine of Omega T minus KX. Right? or you can just write it in these other forms as well, right? So generally we'll see sinusoidal variations and in that case the wave that is formed is also a sinusoidal wave and then these sort of terms really seem to take the familiar values which you know, the wavelength and the time period and so on. Now let's look at this V, wave velocity. We've been talking about this as though we know what it is but let's try to derive it from certain other physical quantities, right? So let's assume the familiar case of a rope moving in a sinusoidal fashion and let's look at a very small section at the top and I'll expand it. So it'll be something like this. Let's say it's making a small angle theta to the center of this circular arc or let's say it's making two theta that will make our calculations easier. In that case this is theta and theta is very very small. I've taken actually a very very no small narrow section. Right and this is going with the speed v this particular end towards the right. So now let's assume there's a certain tension F in the rope. I know we usually use T for tension, but when it comes to wave motion, it does not necessarily need to be a rope. So that's why we'll use the more general variable F. So there'll be two forces acting on this particular element like this. Now this hole is 90 degree and this is theta. So this is 90 minus theta. So is this. So the left component and the right component will cancel and we'll have two downward components. So the net force on this section will be 2 times F cos of 90 minus theta that is 2F sin theta and that will be equal to mv squared by r. We've used the formula for the centripetal force. So m in this case 
let's assume that this particular rope has a mass per unit length mu right so the mass of any particular section is mu times the length of that section what is the length of this section that is equal to r times 2 theta so m can be written as mu r times 2 theta theta and sin theta cancel because we've assumed theta to be very small 2 and 2 cancel r and r cancel so the equation we get is v is equal to root of f by mu there are only two things on which the wave velocity depends it depends on the tension in the rope if you extend it even harder such so that it's uh, extended even tighter then the speed will be higher and the mass per unit length you could say it depends on both the mass and length but essentially what we're trying to say is, is depends on the material of the rope and the material of the rope is not characterized by the mass you could take a greater length and have the greater mass the material of the rope is characterized by the mass per unit length So now we've seen what the wave velocity is as well in transverse waves. Let's look at terms of energy and power. So let's say we have a rope moving and let's say at this particular end it is something like this. And we are focusing on this particular point. So this particular point will have a tangential force acting on it due to the other parts of the rope. Let's say that makes an angle theta and this will have a velocity Vp. Now I want to make a difference clear here. Vp is always in the vertical direction either up or down and it is the velocity of the particle. But V is in the horizontal direction left or right and it is the velocity of the wave. So the notation is important, don't get confused here the power exerted by this rope will be f dot vp that will be equal to uh, minus f sine theta times mod of vp right because this will also be theta so this vertical component is sine theta in the negative direction that can be written as minus f sine theta del y by del t which is what vp is so it gives me minus f del y by del x times del y by del t and we know del y by del x and del y by del t both from this and if you solve it it will come out to be f omega squared a squared by v cos squared omega t minus x by v and if you take the average of this the average of cos square theta is half so it will give you the average power is f omega squared a squared by 2v and we can see a very important result just like in simple harmonic motion it is proportional to the square of the amplitude that is the important thing that is proportional to the square of the amplitude right. we'll discuss the rest of transverse waves in the next video thank you